Hello, I'm Steve Nichols. I'm the Technology and Space Editor for Arabian Aerospace. And with me this afternoon is Major General, retired, I should retired. say. Retired. Uh, Clint Crozier, Director of Amazon Web Services. Now, Clint, the first thing I'd like to say is everyone's heard of Amazon. Everyone buys stuff from Amazon. They have Amazon Prime. I have an Amazon tablet here. Right. Amazon Web Services might be um, maybe quite um, you know, unknown to some people. What is it? How big is it? What do you do? Yeah, well, Amazon Web Services is part of the Amazon family, as the name implies. But what's really interesting is about 10 years ago at Amazon, we recognized that we had built out a giant infrastructure with all of the processes it takes to run the Amazon.com business. And we realized that we had become really, really good about moving large amounts of data in real time and connecting data and analyzing and processing and came up with the idea that we could create an industry where we could make that infrastructure available to other businesses on a pay-as-you-go uh, or pay-by-the-minute use of the infrastructure. And it's been very powerful. We've grown extraordinarily over the last 10 years because businesses recognize the value of not having to invest in all of that infrastructure on your own uh, but rather leverage ours and allows them to go much more faster in terms of innovation and reduces their costs at the same time. Right, so it's kind of cloud computing on steroids by the sounds of it. It is, yeah, it is. Right, okay. And how big is the business? And who are some of your bigger clients? Are? Yeah, well, we have literally millions of customers around the globe, uh, Amazon Web Services, in over 190 countries. So, so we've grown very large. And, and uh, you know, from uh, international banking community to global governments to some of the largest players in the aerospace and space industry that are represented here today, we're supporting uh, uh, companies and government organizations around the globe. And that's what's really exciting. Just recently, in the last two years, AWS recognized the rapid growth in the space industry, and I know we'll talk about that here in a minute, uh, but that's where I came into the picture. I spent 33 years in the U.S. Air Force, uh, was actually the lead architect of the stand-up of the U.S. Space Force, and Amazon recognized how rapidly the space industry was growing and recognized how valuable cloud computing technology could be to the space industry artificial intelligence, machine learning, advanced analytics, data lakes, et cetera. And so determined to stand up the organization that I lead today, the aerospace and satellite team. And so we've built a team of space experts with expertise across every mission from satellite operations to spacecraft design to on-orbit operations to, to space exploration. And so our goal, our mission is to sit down side by side with aerospace companies and with that deep understanding of their mission, apply our cloud-based knowledge about how those technologies can support the industry and allow and help and enable those uh, companies and organizations to grow and scale. Which is why you're at the Dubai Air Show, obviously. Which is why we're here, that's now, right. This is where it gets interesting because I wasn't aware that you were working with Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center yes. on the Hope Mars Hope that's uh, right. space probe. That's right. And you're handling the data for that. That's right. And again, you know, that's what's really been a tremendous growth opportunity for us at Amazon Web Services, but as well as space companies and organizations around the globe. So with Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in particular, what we're really excited about is we've been partnering with them for a few years now. And so the Hope Probe, the satellite that's orbiting around Mars today, and it's, it's doing so for research experiments, uh, understanding the Martian atmosphere, not only so that we can better understand the atmosphere in deep space, but also to better understand things about our own planet. But MBRSC, when all that data from the Martian probe comes down to the Earth, it goes into the AWS cloud. And then it's distributed around the globe to a, a, a group of uh, consortia scientists who are working with MBRSC, who are uh, analyzing the data and using the data. But what's really interesting is all that data comes down in an automatic process, and that's the value stream. It's automated. The data is uh, uh, validated, tagged, categorized, stored, analyzed, uh, 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 geotagged, and then it's all made available to the scientists that are using the data. And what's so interesting about how fast cloud computers are, coupled with the fact that all of this is automated in that end-to-end -end chain that we built for MBRSC, MBRSC tells us that similar activities would take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to process and disseminate all that data, but on the AWS cloud, they're executing it in just 20 minutes. So from 24 to 48 hours to 20 minutes 
in that global distribution analysis process and that's the difference cloud computing is making to the space industry so it's fairly seamless for um, the space center that's right that's the idea behind it and allows them to innovate faster it allows them to focus on the core competency which is drawing insights from the space data and not having to work in those capabilities that are what we call non-differentiating in other words uh, managing data, manipulating data, et cetera. We do all that for them on the cloud with the scale that we have as the largest cloud infrastructure in the world, and they get the benefits for their mission. And I think you've done this before because I realized that you also work with Mars on the, uh, sorry, Mars, NASA. NASA. On the, uh, pers per was it Perseverance? Really? On the Perseverance, yeah. that's yeah. right. Uh, well, what's really interesting about that is 10 years ago when the Curiosity uh, rover first was on the surface of Mars, um, NASA used AWS at that time to distribute the global uh, pictures that were coming down. And that was extraordinarily interesting and valuable. But that wasn't the core mission. That was just distributing photos so that the world could see what was taking place on the mission. Fast forward 10 years later and NASA, seeing the value of the cloud over the last 10 years and partnering with us very carefully, they determined this time, rather than using AWS simply to disseminate pictures, we're actually using it for mission operations itself. So we're a critical part of the mission. So the rover is moving around the surface of Mars and it's taking soil samples and it's doing a little bit of analysis and it's sending it back to Earth. And when it comes back to Earth, it again goes into the AWS cloud and it's distributed around the globe to a global consortia of scientists that are utilizing that data to draw insights, to make predictions uh, uh, and understandings about where the rover should go next and what kind of soil samples it should do next. And the really interesting part of it is innovative as NASA is, and you know they've been on the cutting edge of innovation our whole lives, but the reason NASA partnered with AWS to do that global dissemination and, and analysis of the data is they recognized that our systems could process that, that data faster than their own and so that's why uh, they came back to AWS and partnered on the mission operations piece, not just uh, disseminating pictures, but actually running the mission critical workloads on the surface of Mars. You really are a well-kept secret. I had no idea that you were doing Well, that. that's why we're here to educate <laughs> the space industry and the aerospace industry about some of the really interesting work we're doing. Okay, so what other sectors do you work in? So uh, AWS as a company obviously works in every sector you can think of from uh, education to medical to uh, uh, global banking and finance. My team, as I mentioned, works specifically in the aerospace industry. And what we're seeing is the cloud and cloud-based technologies is allowing us to do missions we could never do before. And for those missions that we have been doing, it allows us to do them much faster and more economical. As I just mentioned with MBRSC, that's a good example. And as we look at the future of the space industry and we look at emerging missions like on-orbit servicing of satellites and about debris clearance and those sorts of things, we recognize that cloud computing technology will be critical to those mission areas as well. In terms of the missions we could never do before, let me give you another quick example that I think you'll find quite interesting. So we have some 3,500 satellites on orbit today in LEO or low Earth orbit. If you look at the filings around the world from the number of people who have indicated they're going to launch satellites into LEO over the next five to 10 years, you probably know estimates are it's going to increase by 10x. Yeah. So from 3,500 objects in LEO to 35,000 over the next five to 10 years. Now, if you think about the very critical mission of space traffic management and collision avoidance, and I've spent my whole career flying satellites and launching rockets. And so on both ends, the flying the satellite side and launching rockets, uh, space traffic management collision avoidance is one of the most important it's missions we do. The, the most important it's thing. It's the most critical mission to yeah. the initial operations. So we're working with a company called Leo Labs. And Leo Labs is doing space traffic management and collision avoidance for Leo. They told us that they were running their global collision avoidance uh, uh, calculations right, making sure those thousands and thousands of satellites don't run into each other, and they said on their own system, on their own premises, they would run it in about eight hours. They moved their workloads to AWS Cloud, and now, uh, as compared to eight hours, they run that global computation in less than 10, you thought I was gonna say 10 minutes, 10 eight, seconds, 10 seconds. 10 seconds, from eight hours to 10 seconds. And that's because we have the largest and most comprehensive cloud uh, 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 infrastructure in the world.
but the second piece that they're taking advantage of is a company that we work with the current labs the current labs came to us and said hey we're building all of our workloads on the a w s cloud and our systems are so fast we would like to go into the world top five hundred supercomputer competition with you so descartes labs will run the workload will run it on the a w s cloud and let's just enter and see what happens so they provisioned a standard workload like they always do on the AWS cloud, and we entered it in that global top 500 supercomputer challenge, and we came in number 40 in the global top 500 supercomputers around the world. And so that explains a company like Leo, who previously took eight hours to run those models, and so what they couldn't do is if a customer called them and said, hey, we're concerned about this pending collision and we think it's gonna happen in about the next two and a half hours, we wanna do a maneuver, can you run the computations and tell us if this maneuver is safe or does it execute into further debris? Well, in the past, Leo Labs would say, well, we can't do that in under two and a half hours and there's nothing we can do for you. Today, they can run that calculation while they're on the phone with the customer and they can say, well, no, that maneuver is actually gonna put you in a worse condition with debris. Why don't you try another one? And they'll run that one and they'll iterate two or three times on the phone and ultimately the customer will come away with a maneuver that they can execute that'll keep them out of the collision danger. And that wasn't possible without cloud-based technology. And I think it's a problem that's gonna get worse. It will as we go from 3,500 to 35,000 yeah. objects on LEO, and that's exactly why yeah. I, I mentioned that statistic. I saw some statistics the other day, and some of the, the uh, constellations are massive. That's right. Uh, 5,000 satellites. That's right. And I just don't think it's possible to put that number in orbit and can keep control of where they all are. But um, obviously, <laughs> thank God for you. Otherwise, yeah. we would thank be in a right you. mess. Yeah. Now, what else are you doing in the region, the Middle East region? Well, in the region, as I said, we're working very closely with MBRSC, and we're yeah. thankful for that partnership, and, and uh, there are other workloads in process that will continue that. Um, we also work with MBRSC on flying uh, and operating their KhalifaSat satellite. Yes. So KhalifaSat does Earth observation imaging, and they're using that to do everything from helping plan smart cities smarter uh, to disaster response to managing uh, the environment and, and paying attention to wildlife and a number of other things they're doing with the satellite. And they're using the AWS ground station to connect to their satellite and bring data down. Now the AWS ground station is a global network and that harkens back to the cloud infrastructure I told you about. So remember, the proposition is don't invest millions and millions of dollars in your global data center infrastructure, rather use ours. So we built a global AWS ground station system that allows you to connect your satellite to the AWS cloud rather than spending all that money on your own infrastructure. And when that data comes down, it ports directly into the AWS cloud, which allows them to run artificial intelligence and machine learning in real time on that data as it comes down. So much faster insights to MBRSC and KhalifaSat's customers, and that's made possible through AWS ground station. In addition, one of the reasons we're here at the Dubai Air Show is we have partnered with MBRSC on a startup challenge. Startups is uh, in an area and environment that AWS really values in that we see tremendous opportunity to innovate for the future in these small, agile, innovative startups. And the cloud provides them an accelerant in, in terms of the cost is cheaper, right? They don't have to invest the millions of dollars in infrastructure, instead use ours. And then when you bring top 40 supercomputer capabilities and advanced AI and ML, et cetera, it allows them to make a difference in the industry much faster. So we're running a challenge here called the Space Tech Challenge, where we've laid out a challenge for companies to identify how to use AI ML workloads and train them on the AWS cloud to identify palm trees within the UAE. UAE is one of the top 10 producers of, of dates in the world, and so they are working to better understand and manage the palm tree population, and so this was a good challenge that, that helps support that ecological uh, um, uh, goal of, uh, of UAE and helps startups in the region understand how to use AIML on the AWS cloud to tackle a real world problem. So we're excited to be here and support that. Right. Now, the next project I think uh, Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center is going to be involved in is the asteroid probe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, the details are a little bit vague at the moment in terms of the actual experiments, but it's going to be 
quite out towards Venus, gravity um, assists around Venus and out to an asteroid, or more than one asteroid, I think. So will you be involved in that project? Well, uh, so I don't have anything specific to offer about that particular mission today. Stay tuned. But what I will tell you is what's really exciting about that is MBRSC is involved. NASA is going back to the moon and to Mars. Yeah. The UAE is going to the moon and Mars. Other international consortiums. And so, as I said earlier, we're living in, probably in my mind, the most exciting time to be part of the space industry since the original Apollo missions in the 1960s. And every one of those advanced capabilities, whether you're looking at how do you do asteroid mining or asteroid detection and prevention, or as I said, on-orbit servicing or in-orbit manufacturing, that's an area that I think is ripe over the next five to 10 years as well. If you think about the costs of putting a satellite in orbit, uh, especially the cost and the difficulty in solar arrays, because they have to be so large to operate, what if you could uh, manufacture those solar arrays in space and you didn't have to launch them into orbit? So as we see the International Space Station and commercial modules of the International Space Station that are being launched over the next couple of years, that really opens up for things like in-space manufacturing on a commercial space station type platform, and it can really fundamentally change the space industry. And so AWS is working with all those companies across all those industries, looking out one, three, five years down the road to identify how cloud-based technologies can allow all those industries to grow and thrive. Yeah. And there is so much going on in the space industry. I did a there story is. recently about power production from space, where it'll be beamed down from space in microwave beams over a long area to, to generate electricity. You wouldn't think that would even be possible, but uh, yeah, I, I'm astonished. Um, and I've been involved in the space industry for quite a while, but yes, now is the time. I think now is right. the time, yeah. right? It's so very exciting. Okay. Now, what else are you doing to make the future space a reality then? What else, what's, what's on the plans? What's on the book? Yeah, well, uh, our team is growing rapidly. As I said, we've developed a team of people with uh, experience across all elements of the space domain. And the reason that we did that is at AWS, we pride ourselves on being obsessed with our customer's success. And so we felt the best way to really enable our customer success was to deeply understand their missions. That's why, you know, me, having spent 33 years in the Air Force flying satellites, launching rockets, and I built a team of people just like that across AWS. Because, let me talk about the data. Here's what's really interesting as we look to the future. As fun as it was to fly satellites and launch rockets, at the end of the day, it's all about the data. It's all about what we can do with data from space, both to make life here on Earth better, as well as to further uh, uh, space exploration. And so when you think about how the number of satellites on orbit is going to increase by 10x in the next five to 10 years, and you think about all that data, petabytes and petabytes of data that are going to be coming down from space, we will literally be confronted with a proposition that we have literally more data than we know what to do with. Yeah. So if you think about it, how are we gonna store the data, distribute the data, manage the data, archive the data, and if you think about it, when you're overwhelmed with data, if you're looking to find when a ship leaves a port, uh, or when a tank leaves a, a, a military garrison, or when an illegal fishing vessel is in illegal waters, and you just throw petabytes and petabytes of data, you'll never pull that needle out of the haystack, if you will. Enter advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning available on the AWS cloud, and now you can go through those petabytes of petabytes of data in near real time, minutes and seconds, to find those things that we know are valuable in the future. And again, you can only do those kind of missions uh, with uh, advanced cloud technologies. Right, and also there's a change in the space industry as well, a, a move towards small sats, cheap yep. sats, if you like. Um, how is that going to impact your business? Well, uh, it, it, it enables a, a lot of growth in the space industry uh, uh, by itself. You know, when you say, how does it impact our business? Our business is supporting space companies and space uh, industry. And so for us, it's all about helping them enable their goals. But what small sats do is small sats allow you to put satellites on orbit at a much larger uh, number than previously. My whole career, we launched one satellite on one rocket, yeah. right? And satellites were likely to be the size uh, anywhere from a, a, a large SUV to a Greyhound bus. Yeah because 
uh, it was so tremendously expensive to get them on orbit. And then once on orbit, we wanted to keep them there for 10 or 15 years. And so we had double redundancy and triple redundancy, right? So we made them very expensive by proposition. As we've seen launch costs come down, and more importantly, as we've seen technology improve, so now you can get the same sort of resiliency and uh, uh, capacity in much smaller electronics. And so that's allowed us to shrink the size of satellites, which allows us to put more and more of them on orbit. Again, one satellite on one rocket my whole career. Um, SpaceX did a launch uh, a few months ago that set a world's record. Yeah. 143 small sats put into orbit on a single rocket. And by the way, 116 or 118 of those 143 satellites are either operating on the AWS ground station or are using AWS cloud technology to power their mission system. So we're very proud about that. But small sats uh, present a really interesting uh, uh, future and will allow us to do a lot of things we couldn't do before. Now, just going back to um, the, this region, I mean, any other projects in the, the, the region we should know about? Well, uh, so we are really excited that we are investing in this region, right? We think this region is ripe for growth, not just in the aerospace and space industry, but, but across all industries. For instance, we recently announced, AWS did, that we're uh, opening in a region here in the United Arab Emirates in UAE. And so what that means is we're bringing three brand new data centers to the UAE. And so the region in UAE adds to the region we built in Bahrain in 2019. And so it just demonstrates our continued investment in this region because we recognize how many countries in this region have digital innovation, uh, economic advancement at the core of their government uh, goals and objectives and we know how much the cloud and cloud-based technologies can help support those. So we're very glad that we're supporting industry across the board and part of the startup challenge we're here supporting and part of our work with MBRSC is to continue to identify additional aerospace and space projects that we can support within the region as well. Okay, now, getting back to space again, you've told us some fantastic stories about Mars, you've told us some fantastic stories about some other you know, NASA uh, experiments. Any, anything else in there that uh, you want Well, to talk about? so we've talked about space exploration, I <laughs> and, I, and I love that, right? But what I'd like to do is bring you back closer to home, for instance, for a second, because, you know, some people say, hey, I, I love space exploration, it's interesting, it's inspiring, but what does that do for us for life here on Earth? And so in AWS, one of our key propositions from our space team is what we call making the world a better place from space. Right. And so we are working with space companies right now today who are building their missions on the AWS cloud across the board, such as there's a company called uh, Gatehouse Maritime, and they're using satellite data to monitor the migration of uh, endangered whales off the coast of California in and out of shipping lanes. And so they're notifying uh, ship uh, harbor masters when there are migrating whales in the area. We're working with companies that are using uh, Satellite View, for instance, out of the UK, is a company that's using satellite data to help manage uh, and, and, and collect thermal emissions from man-made objects here on the Earth so they can help participate in climate management activities. We're working with companies that are using satellite data to model for illegal fishing or for monitoring in remote areas uh, oil and pipelines to ensure that there aren't disruptions or, or breakages. We're working with uh, companies like Digital Earth Africa, who's using space data to monitor food security within the African region to identify areas where crops are underperforming or they're not getting enough water or the growth season is behind so that both they can, uh, uh, one, they can uh, uh, help the governments lean in and try to address it, but two, so we'll know where to posture relief efforts six months down the road because of what we know about the food security issues. So, a myriad of ways we're using space data today uh, that we never would have envisioned five or ten years ago, all because we can operate at scale and speed on the cloud and allow us to make the world a better place from space. And I, I think that's the great thing about um, space is that often the industry is, is, is seen as not helping global warming, but in fact it is helping global warming. Absolutely. Tremendously. Absolutely. And, yeah. and many other things, disaster response, humanitarian relief, all the things yeah. I just described. Yeah. Now, you're, at the, you're actually at the Dubai Air Show, you have a stand at the Dubai Air we Show. We do. What are you showing at the stand? 
Well, we're, we're ready to talk to anybody that comes by and wants to learn how to apply cloud technologies to, uh, to their mission system, so we're happy to do that. And then, of course, we're here supporting the Vista startup uh, activity of uh, MBRSC and UAE. And so we're here with a number of companies. There were some 20 companies that applied to the uh, space startup, to the Space Tech Challenge. We've down-selected that down to six. And so we will be meeting and evaluating uh, those uh, companies' proposals over the next few days and then announcing our overall winner towards the end of the week. So we've got a lot of activity here, I in addition to meeting with a number of our customers uh, who are also happen to be here, and we're taking advantage of that. So a busy week for us, and we're glad to be here. Very busy week. Okay. Um, I'd love to talk to you more about your career in the Air Force. So could, what can you tell me about some of it? Is it, all, is it confidential and secret? Well, I certainly have done my share of confidential <laughs> and secret, but, but you know, in my 33 years in the U.S. Air Force, uh, let's see, I've flown uh, satellite communication satellites, and yeah. I will tell you, the first time I sat at a console and operated a satellite, it was really a, a life-changing event to think that I'm operating a a, a robot, a satellite that's orbiting around our Earth. That was pretty uh, interesting. And then a number of years later, I wound up being a launch commander at Vandenberg Air Force Base, launching uh, Titan IV rockets, putting satellites in orbit. And I'll tell you, when you stand two or three miles away from the launch pad and watch a Titan IV take off, first of all, after the months and months of preparation, uh, building the rocket up, uh, maintaining the pad, mating the satellite to the rocket. That's, uh, you know, uh, uh, we say a couple of seconds of sheer terror as it's uh, yeah. leaving the launch pad. But you can feel the rocket pounding yeah. in your chest literally from three miles away. It's so powerful. So I've been able to do a number of really interesting things over the course of my career, and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, I can actually identify with that. I was at a shuttle launch um, years ago now, I can't remember which one it was, but there's uh, nothing yeah. quite no, like it. There is yeah, nothing, nothing quite, quite like, it. like it. I launched seven uh, rockets, putting seven successful satellites into yeah. orbit during my tenure as a launch commander for two years, and it was uh, just a wonderful. And then, of course, the the real highlight of my career probably was the last two years on active duty. I was the lead architect and the lead planner for the stand up of the U.S. Space Force, and so. Now we have a brand new military service in the United States, and other countries are following oh, we've got that one lead. In England. Yes. And I was saying, other companies oh, are following that lead, right? So we're very, uh, I, I was very honored to be part of that mission as well. Right, I think we could talk all day, but we can't. <laughs> so Major General retired, uh, Clint um, Crozier, thank you very, very much this afternoon. It's thank been you. thoroughly interesting. Thank you for your time. No, no problem, I enjoyed it. Thank it's you to the Dubai Air Show for giving us an opportunity to Absolutely. be here. Absolutely, good, thank you very much, bye-bye.